This is Julie's Wreath Boutique, and today I'm going to show you how to make your own sunflower wreath for your front door. Let's get started. The supplies you're going to use are 10 inch rolls of poly burlap. Poly burlap is a plastic like burlap, and it is great for working um, outdoors. So if it gets wet, it's okay. It's going to withstand the wet and the rain and the wind. It might need a little bit of trimming if you get if it gets too windy. But this is a great material for outdoors. You're going to need a roll of green, a roll of yellow, and a roll of brown. Now you do have options with the green and brown. Uh, you can do, choose a darker green, a moss green, but with the brown you do have light, medium, and a chocolate brown. Today my customer wants the light brown, so that's what we're going to do. The next thing you're going to need is a mat to cut your supplies on. You're going to need a rotary cutter. Here are some wire cutters. I use felt that I cut out into the same size of my wreath form so that I can attach this to the back and that will protect your front door. Here you're going to need Chanel stems, uh, two longer zip ties, I use the shorter zip ties now to connect to this felt, but you can use um, pipe cleaners as well. Um, you're going to need a 10 inch wire wreath frame. In the original tutorial that I did, it showed a wreath frame with the yellow um, pipe cleaner sticking out already. You can still use that. Uh, you may need to add a few um, flowers in between those already, um, how do you say it? the Chanel stems that are already in it. But for this tutorial, we're gonna use just this one. You're going to need a plastic canvas and scissors and a Sharpie. Let's get started. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your plastic mat and you're gonna trace the inside of your circle of your wreath frame. And we're gonna Cut that out and we're going to set it aside to use at the end. The best tip that I can give you, I have made so many of these wreaths and what I have figured out, because these will unravel a little bit at the ends here, you can see. The best tip that I can give you is to make sure you cut in between the lines of your burlap so that it's less fraying and it gives you a much cleaner and crisper look. So on the leaves, we're going to cut five of these leaves and we're going to cut them about 11 and a half inches long. Now you can cut them 10 inches and you can cut them 12. I personally like the 11 and a half. It gives just enough greenery to peek out of the yellow petals. So here we go. Take your time and make sure you cut in between the lines of your burlap, which will give you a nice straight look there. Now we're going to cut our yellow petals. We're going to need 30 of these for a 10 inch wreath frame. Now you can do a bigger wreath frame, but you will need more rolls of the yellow poly burlap and you may need more leaf petals for the green as well. So if you want to do a 12 inch, a 14 inch, the bigger it gets, you can do whatever size you'd like. Right now we're just going to do the 10 inch frame. So now I'm going to cut 30 squares of 10 inch yellow petals. I'm, again, I'm going to cut in between, I'm going to take my time, cut in between the lines here. And I'm going to follow the line. So if it goes a little curved and it comes inside the 10 inch mark, that's okay. It will all come out the same at the end. The important thing is to cut in a straight line. And you will need 30 of these. Now it's time to prepare our wreath. When you look at the wreath frame, you have the outside of your wreath frame, the middle, and then the inside. So because we're going to use three different layers of petals. We're going to start on the outside and where the bracket is, is where we're going to assemble our leaf. So I like to put in my Chanel stem like this and I wrap it around the bottom rim and bring it up and make sure that the other end of the chenille stem is on the opposite bracket. So that this way, when we go to put our leaf in, it can't move. So I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm gonna show you how to assemble the petal. We're gonna start with the leaves and I'm going to make sure that it's curled side up. 
and I'm going to take the corners and I'm going to bring one corner to the middle, the other corner to meet that middle, and then I'm going to take my fingers and just scrunch up the middle here till you have like a bow tie. This is the back of your leaf. I'm going to bring it over and this is the front. This is the side we want to show. So I'm going to take my wreath frame and I'm going to put it in the middle of where my Chanel stem is. And I'm going to make one twist to right here and make sure that that is secure. At this point, I'm gonna go and do it here, 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 and here. Now, if you wanna make a bigger wreath, you can do so, but you'll need more petals and more leaves. So let's finish the leaves. Now at this point, we're going to attach our outer layer of petals. We're going to take a yellow square and do the same thing. Put your corners inside and scrunch it up to the middle until you have a bow tie look. You're going to put this outer layer on top of the green leaves. And you're gonna twist once and you're gonna take another yellow petal and you're going to do your technique again. And I always kind of smush mine up there to kind of help me. And I'm going to secure it now. So I've done that at least two to three times. Now I'm going to secure these um, remaining parts of the Chanel stem underneath our frame. So I'm going to hold my frame and I am just going to secure it right here. And there you have your first petal of your outside. We're gonna do the same thing throughout the whole rim. Now you can see I have the outer petals all done and I've tucked in my Chanel stems underneath and secured them so they won't come loose. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the middle ring. What I like to do is I like to use both of these middle wires and secure them together with a pipe cleaner or Chanel stem, whatever you like to call them. So I make a little anchor there for my next set of petals. Again, we're gonna do the same technique, nothing has changed. Keep repeating this process. This way, they're in between each of the other petals and now we're variegating them. Gives, it will give it a lot more body and fullness at the end and resemble more like a flower. So I'm going to secure this really tightly and then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to secure it to the next wire and I'm just going to twist my stem there. It's very important that you do not lay your wreath down flat on your surface while you do this. If you do that, you will have a mess when you get done putting your, your wreath together and we want to keep that mess from happening. So right now I'm going to go and I'm going to put two petals here, two petals there, here and here. And then we will get back and we'll finish the inside of the wreath. All right, now I have my middle layer done, my outside layer done, and now we want to do the inside layer. And if you will look at the inside of this wreath, you will see the inside bracket bars. And this is where we're going to attach the inside layer of petals, two petals on each one of these brackets. And another thing I'd like to share with you is, by the time I get to the middle layer, I want to use the more curled uh, pieces of poly burlap. This way, this will give you more texture and um, fullness for your wreath. So I'm going to take my Chanel stem and come up through my bracket. There's a Chanel stem on each side. Okay. And then I'm going to just repeat my steps. 
I'm going to make my bow of my petal and I'm going to lay it on the inside and I'm going to twist it and make one more petal to go on top. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to make sure that I secure it with one Chanel stem on one side of the bracket and another on the opposite end. And I'm going to twist it and anchor my flower petal there. So now I'm going to do the four remaining brackets and we'll work on the center. All right, let's make the center of our wreath now. We're gonna use this color brown poly burlap, but you can choose other color centers like a darker brown if you'd like. We're just gonna do this because this is what my customer would requested. We're gonna take our round piece of plastic canvas that we cut earlier, and this is going to be the base of our center. I'm going to use these zip ties in my original tutorial. I show you to use um, the Chanel stems, but, and you can still do that, but this is what I do on a regular basis now. I just find this a little bit more um, easier to work with for me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, the poly burlap and I'm going to gather it in my hand like so. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna secure it to this on the side of your circle with a zip tie. So I'm just gonna run it through here. Sometimes it can be a little hard to work with, but you'll get the hang of it. I'm gonna set it down, run my zip tie through. So now that I have that secure, I'm going to take um, a length of my poly burlap and I'm going to take it and run it across the front of our circle. And I'm going to attach it though on the back like I did the other side. So here is the back of your center. So I'm going to attach it here and I'm going to put it, the zip tie down in it and bring it through. So this is the start. At this point, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to play with it a little bit and get it just manipulate it to the look that I want it to be. So, so now we're going to take this part here, get my zip ties out of the way. We're going to take another strand of poly burlap and we're going to just wrap it around the front. Sometimes I like the, the edges to show here. And I'm going to secure it to the back. So I'm just going to keep repeating this process till I get to the edge of the circle. And I'll come back when I'm to that edge to show you. Now that I have finished my center, all I did was I kept going back and forth, back and forth. And when I got to the end, sometimes I like to run it over and just fill in that middle Part and I ended it in the middle. And then at that point, you just need to play around with it and get it to look. You might need to stretch it out. You might need to, you know, bend over the fabric a little bit, but just to get the circle the way you want it. So right now, I'm going to take two longer zip ties that I have, and I'm going to connect them. I'm going to run them through the sides of my center. And this is how we're going to attach this to our wreath. I'm going to do the same over here. It's always important to have the flat side of the zip tie facing up because that's the correct way to use them. So I'm going to take my wreath here and I'm going to bring it over 
and I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to bend these in and I'm going to just put my center in the middle here. And at this point, I'm going to pull gently on some of these petals so that we can get this flower in the spot we want it to be in. And don't be afraid, this is how you're going to make this, this flower really pop here. The center just makes it. Okay, so now that I have it in there like that, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to secure the zip ties onto the wreath frame. I'm going to go underneath and run that zip tie through. Do it the opposite side and make sure that it's secured well. So I'm going to run it through. Run it through pretty tight here. Kind of just gives it more depth for that center to be down in there. As you can see, the, the petals come up. So before I go through, I know you probably are thinking, well, that looks beautiful already. It's not done. We need to fluff it up and we need to pull the extra strands out of it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to go around the wreath and I'm gonna separate my petals because you remember our petals are two petals on one. So when we separate them and we just kinda of bring them up like so, we are just going to give a lot more dimension to our flower. And I just am going to go around and you can see that I'm kind of creating, by doing so, I'm kind of creating these strands. I'm just going to pull that out. And this just takes a minute to do. The more you do this, you might have less strands. It's not a big deal. It'll just take you a little bit of time to pull them out. So as you can see, I'm already getting much more volume on my flower. I'm almost all the way around. I do like to um, pull out the green a little bit so that you can see it. Can you? I hope you can see that. Um, you can see that a little bit more. And again, you can always make these leaves a little bit longer. It's your taste and your preference. This is just the way I do it. So. And sometimes you might need to, you know, play with the center a little bit to get it get it to where you want it and what, what you like. So now that I've got it all fluffed up here, I'm going to just simply go around and tear out these loose edges here or strands. Sometimes you might have to take a pair of scissors to them and that's okay. Sometimes they can be a little bit more stubborn than others. See, I'm not really sure right there. I'm not sure how I like that part. And it's just kind of a trial and error type of a craft here. Now at this point, we're going to cover the back of our wreath with this felt. I cut it out uh, previously. I just traced the wire wreath frame with it and cut out my felt. So I'm gonna take a sharp pair of scissors and I'm just gonna put a hole in the outer edge of my felt so that it has somewhere to attach to. Usually five to six zip ties does the trick for me, depending on the wreath. So I'm gonna take, bring my wreath back over and now we're going to cover that mess and I know it's not that big of a deal but I like to cover it. it protects your door and so what we're going to do is we're going to cover it put the zip ties through the felt hole that I made and secure it this way and then I'm just going to go all the way around and finish it and clip off the ends and now you have a beautiful wreath for your front door like and subscribe my channel and make sure you follow me on Etsy. It's juliesreathboutique.etsy.com and my Facebook page, Julie's Wreath Boutique. Make sure you comment below with the next flower design that you would like me to make. Until the next project, see you later.